In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the Dataverse Batch Connect actions from Power Tools for Power Automate. There are two main reasons why you'd want to batch request to Dataverse. Firstly, to improve the performance of your flows. Secondly, to reduce the number of API actions your flow uses. There are three actions available. Batch Create Records, Batch Delete Records Simple, and Batch Delete Records Advanced. Before getting into the actions, it's important to set up a connection reference to your Dataverse environment. So let's create a flow with the simple list rows action and select the table you want to work with. I am selecting the created on column to reduce the size of the output and setting the row count to one so that I only get a single record returned. Now that the flow has run, I want to get the outputs from the list rows action. I'm copying the value section so we can extract the bits of information we need to create our connection reference and batch actions. From the OData property, I want to grab a couple of values. First, I want the address of our Dataverse environment. And secondly, I want the table name of our target table. So now I'm going to set up a connection reference to the Dataverse environment. For the purposes of this demo, I'm going to create a new connection. Choose the HTTP with Enter ID pre-authorized connector and paste in the Dataverse address into the base resource URL and the resource URI, and then sign in. For now, I'm going to delete the action and then refresh my solution and rename the connection reference. And that's it, my connection reference is now all set up and ready to use. Okay, back to our flow now, and we can actually build these batches up. So what I'm going to do is I've got this empty table here of data about people, and I have a, and I have a file here of a JSON array containing 1000 records that we're gonna put into that table. So, First of all, I'm going to do a get file content. Then I am going to use the batch create records action. And here I need to supply it with the data it needs. So I need my site address. I can put it in like this or I can leave the HTTPS out. Then I need the name of the table. Um, and that has the prefix on there, so I'm gonna remove that and put it in this prefix here. What I normally do for this is use a environment variable. And then I need to supply it with the actual items. Now this is expecting an array so I will remove that and put it into this mode. I'm just going to type JSON and pick the dynamic content of the file. Now, that file is happens to have the correct field names for the Dataverse fields. In reality, you might have a select action before here to organize your input data before passing it to the batch create records action. Then I can go to the invoke HTTP request step, making sure to pick the pre-authorized one. Then I'm gonna check that I've got the connect refer connect re connection reference. Um, that's the one that we just created, the Dataverse demo. Set it to post. Okay, so for the URL of the request, I pick API endpoint. That will take us into an apply to each loop. For the headers, I can pick all the headers. And for the body, I can pick batch body. And that's all there is to it. The other important setting is this batch size. It can be anything from 100 to 1000, which is the maximum you can send in one batch. Depending on the size of your input data, will determine the output size of your payload. Um, 250 seems like a good place to leave it. If your input data is very small, then you could put it up to 1,000. 
and in the example that we're using a thousand would probably be fine but I'm going to leave it on 250 so we can see the apply to each loop work we've got a thousand records so this should create us four batches so we should have four items in our apply to each loop let's just check the table is empty it is and now let's test it okay so the flow has completed successfully and the apply to each loop did run four times and it took 15 seconds let's refresh this we can see that we've got lots of records in there now and here is the data that was sent to the batch API and instead of using a thousand API actions we used only four and the data got in there much quicker to insert these same thousand records with an apply to each loop with each record takes about eight or nine minutes so it's a massive speed improvement now we can move on to deleting those records or perhaps just deleting some of them so let's create another flow Okay, the first thing we need is a list rows action. Now, the output from Dataverse is very verbose. And if you have a table with a lot of fields, the output from it can be huge. So for best performance, select the created on column. This will reduce the size of the output and it will still contain all of the data we need to delete the records. So if I just do a row count of one, we can just take a look at the output from that. Okay, here is our record. And the output from that was minimized by specifying that we only wanted created on. But the field that really drives it, which we can't, we can't choose not to get, is the OData ID. So that's the important one. So we can go back to our flow now. And what I will do is actually add a filter onto this. And I'm going to put a filter condition of retired as equal to true. Then I can go to my batch delete records simple. There are two actions, simple and advanced, and this one I'm going to show you simple. So simple is designed to get all of its input from the output of a list rows action. So I'll switch this to input for entire array. I'll remove that and pick the output of this. Just again, as before, I can go into now my invoke action check my connection reference, pick post, then I can pick my API endpoint. That's gonna put me into an apply to each loop. Pick my request headers, and then the batch body, and then save that. Let's just take a quick look at our table. So we've got lots that are retired set to yes and we're going to before we run the flow i've changed the row count to 5000 so let's test that okay so it sent two batches so there must have been under 500 people in that retired column if we go back over to here now and refresh we can see that there is nobody left that is retired And that is how easy it is to generate batches with this batch delete records simple. It just simply accepts the output of the list rows action, which makes the configuration of this dead simple. So now I'll have a look at the advanced version, um, which is more difficult to use than the simple version. And it would only be really in edge cases that you would use it. Um, now the advanced version expects you to supply the site address, the table name, the batch size, and the table prefix, like the create action. And it also will only accept 
a simple array of GUIDs. So in my list actions row, I've left the select columns empty. I'm going to add a select action and I'm going to get from there. And from here, I will just take the unique ID, which is that. And I will still slim the output down, but I'll just put that in there. Just make sure it's still there. Yeah. And then I can supply this, the output of the select, into here. Now, if you're working with, if you're going to do a batch on a massive data set, then this simple array of values will give you slightly better performance. Um, just like with the create action, I need to fill in those values. And that should be enough. I can then go to invoke HTTP request pre-authorized. And just like before, I can add in the values. Put in the headers, put in the batch content. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got any. Yeah. And that's it. I say, and you would only, if you're pumping in, say, 10,000 records into the batch action, then you're better off with the advanced version. Otherwise, just use the simple version and put in the output from list rows. Um, just the internal logic inside of the function can deal easier with the list of GUIDs because that's just a much smaller payload. As you can see, it has now done uh, three batches so let's just see so there's nothing left in that table um, and that is it that's how the advanced one works so i hope you enjoy these new actions which can give you a massive performance benefit to your flows while making batching something that can be achieved by anyone easily in a low code manner